This is video number 26 in a series about complex arithmetic. In the last video, I introduced some basic topological concepts in the complex plane. Actually, we didn't get very far with that. What we did was we defined the notion of an open disk centered at, of a certain radius, centered at a certain point. So you've got a point Z0 in the complex plane, and you've got a certain radius, positive number rho. What does it mean for a set to be an open disk? Here I'm spelling disk with a K, but if you prefer a C, that's fine as well. What does it mean to be an open disk of radius rho centered at the point? That would be all points within a distance of rho of that given point, strictly less than rho, not equal to it to technically be an open disk. The idea of an open disk is that you're not including the boundary points on this disk, all the points inside. The yellow points here are part of the open disk. Because I made this boundary dash, those boundary points on that circle are not part of the open disk. I used re region plot to do this. We'll continue with using region plot. You can write this in set builder notation in one of three nice ways there. The set of all complex numbers z in c, whose distance to z0 is less than rho. You can write that with x plus i, y. The real and imaginary parts are x and y. And write, use the uh, distance formula to write it this way. You can also square both sides of that inequality to get rid of the square root. Also, there's some notation that people sometimes give to this. Sometimes people call this the open ball of radius rho centered at z0, or the open disk like I did down here. And maybe you want to use a, a d sub rho or something like that, and then put a z0 in here to indicate that this is notation for that open disk of radius rho centered at z0. Another term that people use for this um, is the a circular neighborhood of radius rho centered at z0. That's another term, at least that Saf and Snyder use. The term neighborhood is kind of a topological term that I'm not going to go into beyond what I'm just telling you right now. What we want to do now is we want to use this concept of an open disk to help us define something called an open set. And before we define an open set, we need another preliminary definition. Given a set S, that's a subset of the complex plane, and we, well, we say that a point Z is an interior point of S if there exists an open disk, well, let's phrase it as there exists a row greater than zero such that that open disk of radius row centered at z, and next, actually let's call this point z naught, such that the open disk of radius rho centered at z0 is a subset of s. I didn't say z0 had to be a point of s, but because this has got to be true, it evidently is a point of s. There's some rho such that this open disk is a subset of s. That's what it means to be an interior point of s. Intuitively, think about back up here, visually, any point inside this open disk is going to be an interior point of the disk. Even if we included the boundary on the set, well, if we did include the boundary as part of this set here, and we considered Z0 to be a point on that boundary, there would be no disk centered at Z0 that would be contained in that set, and that would not be an inter interior point of that set. And the reason that wouldn't work is because such a set would not be open. And that leads us to our de next definition here. A set S is open. Technically speaking, I should add the phrase in the complex plane here, in C, but that's always assumed, so we'll just say open. If every point of S is an interior point. Of S. So this is best illustrated 
by examples, and this open disk is one example, every point in the disk is an interior point of the disk. No matter how close you go to the boundary, you'll be able to find a little tiny radius such that an open disk centered at that point that you're pointing at here would be contained entirely inside the yellow set and not touching the boundary and not going over the boundary. The closer you get to the boundary, the smaller row has to be, but you'll always be able to figure out a row that'll work. Let's illustrate this for another set. This is called the right half plane, the set of all points in the complex plane whose real part is strictly bigger than zero. We'll use region plot to plot it. And just like in the last video, region plot as a default puts a frame around the graph and I, I want to get rid of that. It does not put axes in there. I, I do want the axes in there and let's label them in the usual way. So this plots the right half plane. You need to look at this picture and imagine it going on to the right forever and up here forever and down here forever, but it does cut off along the imaginary axis where x is zero, the real part is zero, and it does not include the imaginary axis, so we should also perhaps add in through show and graphics, for example, a line, a dash line, that indicates that that imaginary axis is not part of the set. We get thick dashed line. Oh, for example, starting down at maybe negative uh, 0, negative 10, and going up to 0, positive 10. That'll be good enough. There we go. That's to emphasize that that imaginary axis is not part of the set. Whoops. This this part does go up forever even though it looks like it's cut off, and this part does go down forever even though it looks like it's cut off, and of course to the right forever. This is an open set. Every point of it is an interior point. No matter how close you are to the boundary, you'll be able to find some small radius row that keeps your set, keeps your open disk of radius row inside that boundary. For example, let's just copy and paste region plot here to uh, save some time, although I don't need those other options actually. Let's see. A disk of radius, well, if our point is, say, the point um, 2 plus i, we're two units away from the imaginary axis. As long as our radius is less than 2, actually even equal to 2, it will work. We'll get a disk that will be inside the right half plane. Let's make this yellow. Whoops, made a mistake somewhere, I need a comma there. There we go. If we go closer, say one unit away, technically speaking, that's still, this is an open disk, I haven't made the boundary dash, but it's, it's supposed to be dashed. It's still a subset of the right half plane. If we wanna sort of play it safe, we can make it smaller. If we go even closer, we have to make it even smaller to sort of play it safe. Uh, something interesting happens here. It seems like the disk disappeared. That's because I need more points to be plotted there. And to play it safe, we'll go up to, say, 200. It goes a little slower here now, but there we go. There's the disk. Go even closer, like 0.1 unit away. We can play it safe by making a 0 0.05 here. There we go. Do you see a little tiny disk right there? Let's see if we can quickly make a manipulate that will animate what I just showed you here. And our animation parameter is going to be, actually, with let's do it with locator. We've got our z-naught, say, starting at the point 2, 1. And so our disk is going to be centered at, well, first of all, if I do this, that's the real part of z-naught. And then if I change that 1 in there to a 2, that's the imaginary part of z-naught. And as long as I am say z not the, the real part over 2 away this is half of the real part from if I make that the radius of my disk this should stay inside of the right half plane I'm going to go back down to 100 points here so it doesn't take so long 
And I, if I move closer then to the imaginary axis there, my disk is adjusting itself so that it stays smaller, so that it stays inside the right half plane no matter how close I get. Once again, illustrating this right half plane where the imaginary axis is not included is open. It's an open set. Every point is an interior point of it. If we did include the imaginary axis in the set, it would no longer be open. Any point on that imaginary axis, for any point, such point, there would be no disk, no matter how small a row is, that would be completely inside the set, and that would not be an open set because of that. And that's the end of this video.